one thing. So once you guys get elected, if there's only one thing that you could get accomplished, what would that one thing be? Impeachment. <laughs> um, yeah. um, I really believe that we need to get uh, this tax bill reversed. The, the policies that are being made by one bill are really scary. I mean, it's not only about taxes, there's a piece of about health care, there's all kinds of social legislation going on in this one bill. And I think that's a disgrace. I think it's also a disgrace that the individuals who had to vote on it didn't have time to read the bill. It wasn't prepared right. You know, one of the things is um, our kids are applying for colleges. And one of the things we say to them is make sure you show, show up your best and make sure it's complete and get it in on time. Our representatives, do you see the pages of this bill, the scribbles and that? That would be my priority, is to make sure the American people are protected from horrible bills like this tax bill and to stop that tax bill. I think it's almost impossible to identify a single most important thing, so I have to put it under a grouping. And the grouping would be to end economic inequality. And that applies to so many things, whether it be health care, education, um, jobs. The, the, the income and economic inequality in this country is at the root of so many problems, and that would be my first and foremost guiding principle whatever issue I was faced with. So I think there's, a, there's, a, there's an intersection between healthcare and education and economic dignity. And um, if you're unhealthy, I don't, that, the plumbers on the wall really begin to shrink. And, and the fact is, you know, the, the nation with the largest GNP that has arguably the best health care doesn't have full unfettered access to it. And we have health insurance companies that are dictating medical orders to doctors. And so uh, if you're unhealthy, if you have part-time health benefits, that ties you to a dead-end job. Imagine what kind of nation we would be if health care was a right, we had a single source payer, we didn't have to pay deductibles or co-pays, that would add on average to our budget $6,000 for the average median income. Uh, it would free up capital for small businesses that are counting the backbone of an outdated equation that goes back to World War II when companies were competing with each other by giving nominal benefits. So, so health care is, is, is a critical issue. And, and we, have, we have continued to enlarge, and enlarge the economic um, spheres between the 1% and the 99% because of it. And, and Big Pharma controls much of Congress, by the way, on both sides of the aisle. And, and so um, the intersection between health care and education. I mean, your education, the education that we are giving our children is going to impact our, our economy. And we are miseducating our children by inappropriately misfunding public education. We don't have universal preschool. The first four years of life are the most critical to our development. It's where personality is formed. It's where neurons are attaching. So think about it. We, we don't have national policy that says every child should have free, unfettered access to high quality, affordable, early learning. That, that's like the basis of civilization, right? Um, and then you go to a public school that has an uh, outdated uh, structure, lacks resources. That's, that's problematic, Mark, and, and so we've got to value our children's education, we've got to value um, our health, and, and I think that those are two critical issues that, that we need to focus on. I am hoping that this bill does not pass this tax. I am believing. <laughs> I, 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 I am believing. No, I'm serious. There were hundreds of us that showed up, and there's hundreds of folks that are showing up every day. And they are knocking on offices, and they are, when you see folks show up in wheelchairs who are double lung transplant 
patience. This is not about politics. This is about a bill that is going to take away subsidies for folks that are literally grasping for air. If that, if that doesn't impact you, you've got to really check your card as a human being. So I, I'm really believing that, that we're going to force folk to do what's right. Because there's thousands of people who are showing up every day on Capitol Hill who are screaming, who are yelling, who are getting arrested. And one of the things as Democrats, we love quoting Dr. King because we love being enamored by what Dr. King said, but we don't like what Dr. King did. And Dr. King was a proponent of nonviolent direct action. And I think we're at a point in our nation where words aren't enough. You can't talk your way into an office. you got to work your way into it. And that has to happen before the first Tuesday on November. Thank you so much. Um, this has been really uh, awesome. So let's give it up for our guests. Thank you so much. It's um, Elizabeth. I just want to say, on the back of my card is info at Elizabeth Morrow. It's my email. I don't put that on there because it, just to be cute. I want you to talk to me. Tell me what your concerns are. <coughs> because I want to be that representative even before I get the office. Because I think sometimes in these opportunities where we can meet with one another, we can begin to discuss issues that maybe no one even knows about yet, and we can start the conversation. So it's, it's a powerful place to be if we can already talk to one another and say, this needs to be paid attention to. This is an article I read, and I wish you would read it too. Please, please stay in touch, because I, I would love to hear from you. Thank you.